know this Colin Barnes better than me. Oh, no, I don't. Not really. Yep, I'd never laid eyes on him before Tony's funeral. God, that's cold-blooded, eh? Go at the funeral of the bloke you've killed. Oh, come on. We don't know that, do we? It hasn't been proved, has it? Well, the police must have someone on him. That's why I take him in for questioning. Oh, I don't know. Why would he do it? Well, he was close to his brother, I suppose. Colin thought that it was all down to Tony that Des had been killed. You know, with him being into drugs and that. Tony got hit, Des tried to help and... Oh, God. That's just like when I got hit by them men. I could have been killed and all. Stop it, will you? Going over it and over it. I have lost my husband and my son and you two are sitting there picking at the bones like vultures. OK, it was my fault. I didn't know you were there. We were just trying to make sense of it, Nat. Well, do it somewhere I can't hear you. Is anybody in there? I'll give you to three to show yourselves. One, two. So, you have been sent here to help me out, have you? Aye, but I don't know why. Because I'll be straight with you. I'm not interested in flowers and that. Is that right? Well, I can tell roses and I can tell dandelions. Then I'm about finished. Listen, son, I have been sent all sorts, but I'm the expert, and you do what I tell you to do. Hey, it's not dog muck, is it? I date that. Scraping up dog muck. I have one golden rule. I do not think about, let alone talk about work until after nine. Now, that is 20 minutes away, so stop your blethering and sit down. Aye, right. Hey, you. Do you want a fag? No, I wouldn't say no. So, uh, you're not a glutton for work, then? There is no point of rushing around a park. Oh, no. You cannot rush nature. No. My old man, he used to say to me, Neville, he would say, do not worry your head about work. There'll be plenty of it there long after you're dead and gone. Aye, it's true as that. He also used to say, Neville, whatever job you do, make sure the job works for you. Show it who's master. He was a wise old man, your dad. Hey, I like his reasoning. I think I'm going to like it, yeah? Of course you will. It's a Bobby's job. Oh, there is one thing that you should know. See this uh, park lake? Yeah? They reckon there's a crocodile in it. <laughs> what? A crocodile? Yeah, some lunatic brought it back from Florida when it was a baby, a tiny little thing. But they grow, you know. So, he slipped it into the lake. Mind you, I haven't seen it. But something's eating the ducks. You're pulling my plunker, aren't you? A crocodile in the park lake. <laughs> Please yourself. But you'll no catch me paddling. Hope it all goes well. Well, I can't see why it shouldn't. They made a good appointment for once. The right man has got the job. Absolutely right. Yeah, so why are my nerves twanging like banjo strings? It's only natural. Yeah. And you'll be brilliant. Mm. And I look forward to hearing all about it tonight. Oh, I might be late tonight. I might have to stay on a bit, you know, get the angular paperwork. Oh, Martin. What? Um, I told Sally we'd go for a drink with her and Danny. OK. All right, fair enough. But you'll have to tell her it'll be later on. I'll see you. <laughs> Martin starts his new job today. Charge nurse. Curly? Oh, I'm sorry. You look like you've seen a ghost. Yeah, well, it was a bit like that. What was? I came downstairs this morning and someone's been in my house in the night. Well, you mean like a burglar? Well, no, that's the creepy part. There was no windows smashed in, no doors kicked in. There was... Well, there was nothing missing as far as I could tell. Just some stuff moved around. My dustbin, it ended up on my table. Ooh, that is creepy. So while I've been asleep at night, there's been some madman in my house. I think someone's trying to scare me. And to tell you the truth, they're succeeding. Oh, 
Good morning, Hayley. Hi there. Now, as from today, you're the supervisor, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had a slept last night. I just lay awake worrying, thinking I'm going to make a pig's ear of this. No, you won't. Look, the girls like you. They'll listen to you. You're the best machinist, and when it comes to the job, you know what you're talking about. Hayley, have you got a minute, please? Have I done something wrong already? I don't know. I shouldn't think so. Look, go and see what he wants. It's not like his dad, you know. He won't sink his teeth into your leg. <laughs> the old man rang me this morning. He's stuck in Leicester till tonight, so he told me to have a word with you. Oh? He said to tell you, well, impress on you with the exact words, that what he wants off you is a big improvement in quality control. We've been turning out far too many seconds recently. So it's up to you to keep the girls up to scratch. OK? Well, yeah, I suppose. Uh, can I just ask you something? I I'd just like to know, well, I mean, am I getting any extra money for this? Oh, sorry, you'll have to talk to him about that. Mind you, if he was here, I know what he'd say. Hey, stone me, you haven't even done anything yet. Let's uh, wait to see if you're any good at it first. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll just have to do my best, then. I just hope my best is good enough. I don't know if you can watch this. What? Bullfighting? How can anybody be so horrible to animals? Oh, there's a lot worse than bullfighting and hunting and shooting. A lot worse. Take that bacon <clears throat> sarnia you're eating. And what about it? It's imported bacon, cos it's cheaper than British. So it's come off some pig that's had a really awful life. They keep them in these little pens all the time, like boxes. They're so small they can't even turn around or lie down. All they can do is eat till they get slaughtered. Oh, yeah, you're putting me off my food. Yeah, well, it does put you off when you know about these things. Will you get us a donut, please? All right. Tell you what, right. fancy a drink in the Rovers? Of course he does. He always fancies a drink in the Rovers. Unfortunately... Yeah, unfortunately, I've got to go cash and carry and get some stock. And while I'm there, um, I'll get a load of cheap booze, eh? All right, Nita. Hey. I need to. Yeah, well, uh, make sure you get a lot of booze there for this party. Party tonight, our place, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to be a good turnout, so, uh, you know, it's shaping up to be a bit of a wild night. Great. Pardon? I said great. I'm really looking forward to this party. It's been ages since I've been to a good do. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you're not invited, Nita. Steve, I don't need an invitation. I live there, remember? Besides, what am I going to do, walk the streets while you lot live it up at home? <laughs> Have a word with your sister, what do you think? <laughs> you're having a result, aren't you? You've just been dead set against it. Yeah, but you're going ahead with it, aren't you? So if you can't beat them, join them. Get me a bottle of tequila, will you? <laughs> Get your own booze. <laughs> Excellent. So when are you going to uh, put Vic out of his misery and uh, tell him you've agreed to sell the house? Oh, come on, Dave. He's got to suffer a bit more first. Mm. And are you really going to this uh, party? <laughs> you couldn't keep me away. <laughs> huh? Hiya. Hiya, Rebecca. Come in. So... <laughs> This is the powerhouse of your empire, is it? No, not really. <laughs> not enough power for my liking. Mm. Although maybe there's just a teeny weeny bit of power. Like this. What are you doing? I'm doing the shifts for the next four weeks. Now, would you say that I was abusing my position if you and me happened to be doing the same shift nearly all the time? I wouldn't say that, no. Mm. What do the people know? Let them. Mm. I really missed you. Yeah, me too. Are you going to come back to mine when you're finished? Um, I thought you were never going to ask. <laughs> yeah. You sure you should be working? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm better out here than stuck in the back wondering what's going on at the police station or why they've got Colin there in the first place. Oh, you could ring Reynolds and ask him. A lot of good that's done so far. No, I'm assuming that when the police have got something to tell me, then they'll tell me. Yes, Janice. All right, can I have a pint and a gin and tonic? Yeah. Thanks. You eat meat, don't you? I mean, Toy's not turned you veggie. <laughs> She'd be wasting the time if she tried to. Make my own decisions, me. Why? Has she been giving you the veggie lecture? No, we're just talking about food. Well, if you're keen on it like our Toy is, there's more to it than just food, you know. There's all that animal experimenting. Oh, we mean, like, cutting the bits up? That just saves lives. Oh, no, no, not all of it. I mean, I was reading once this article about how they make dog smoke fags and they put shampoo in rabbit's eyes to test it. Really? Hmm? Cheers. I can't believe it. Hmm. 
I have to talk to you. You've got a nerve coming in here. We need to talk in private. <laughs> I'm not talking in front of her. Well, I'm not leaving her alone with you. I haven't escaped, you know. The cops don't turn you loose if they think you've killed someone. Don't listen to him, Nat. Just go back in the bar, Debs, will you please? You sure? Yes. All right, well, just shout if you need me. Well, it's quite obvious your sister thinks I killed Tony. Do you? No. No, I don't. Well, you'd be pleased to hear that the police don't think it had anything to do with it either. Though they did for quite a while. That's what they said they did. So why did they take you in? Because I was on their shortlist. They know I had no time for Tony. They know I blame him for what happened to Des. So I told them straight, Tony was poison. He deserved all he got. He was my son. Yeah, I know, I know, I man. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm just trying to be straight with you like I was with the police. But you haven't told me why they let you go. Well, it took them long enough, didn't it? The best part of 24 hours they had us in there. Questions, questions. You know, I had to prove where I was when Tony was killed. But they don't know when Tony was killed. Well, not exactly, anyway. Yeah, well, they do now. It seems they've got three or four witnesses who saw Tony in a club in Manchester on February the 4th. He was there till at least 2 o'clock in the morning. And later that day, at nine in the morning, he was supposed to collect money that was owned to him from one of his legmen. And he never showed. That's why they kept asking me where was I between 2 a.m. and 9 a.m. February the 4th, 1999. I'm surprised you could remember. Well, I couldn't. Didn't have a clue. So I asked them to get my last year's diary from home. So they sent the police corps all the way to Hartlepool and back just to get it. And there it was, my alibi. So when they asked for the hundredth time where was I on the night Tony was killed, I could show them the diary and I could tell them. Weatherfield. <laughs> yeah, their eyes lit up. Till I told them. I was in bed with Tony's mother. What? The night we went upstairs, that's the night they reckon Tony was killed. Told you it was a Bobby's job, didn't I? Aye. Hey, where else could you get paid for wet in a bed? <laughs> <laughs> Here, hold on to that. I'll see you later. Why, where are you going? I'm going off for a lie down and a nourishing fag, and until I get back, you are in charge of the park. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Oi, I thought I recognised your mutt. All right, Les. Dogs must be on a lead at all times. It's a sign-up, telling you. Yeah, what's she doing now, Arm? She better not drop anything. Dogs must not foul the footpath. Penalty, 50 pounds. There's a sign telling you that, I know. Yeah, well, that's no good to Monica. She can't read, can she, do? Same as you, eh? Hey, I can read. I bet I can read better than you can. Oh, aye. Right. Go on, up it. Get out of it, hey! and take your scabby out of my park! <laughs> oh, thanks. You're not really coming to the party, are you? Oh, I am. I won't miss it for the world. Yeah, but you've got work tomorrow. So? Well, the party's going to go on till late and you'll be wrecked. And anyway, you're not going to know anyone there. It's all mine and Steve's mates. Not all, Vikram. Uh, I've invited quite a few people myself. Auntie Sita, for one. Auntie Sita? Well, it's not that kind of party. Oh, and Nancy Namala, she's really up for it, even at the age of 85. In fact, her very words to me were how much she was looking forward to meeting Vikram's friends. Usual, please, Leanne. Hello, Gail. Hi, hey, Curly. Did you tell the police about your intruders? Yeah, I did. That's why I'm in here, you see. They're sending some round at four o'clock. I thought I'd have a quick drink first. Well, at least they're taking you seriously. Well, I hope so. I mean, if some maniac can get in my car and into my house, what are they going to do next? I was soaking wet. I could have froze to death, you know. Well, you shouldn't go near Les Batterby when he's got a flaming nose pipe in his hand. Let that be a lesson to you. Oh, I'm going to teach him a lesson. He'll be sorry, all right. Now, look, last time you had a go at Les Batterby, 
You know got him flung in a strange ways. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it, when he had keep scrubbing them walls? Hey, 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 just cool it, eh? Oh, he's gonna cool it, just like me and Monica did. Oh, he's gonna be so sorry when I finish with him. I'm gonna get him good. Two teas. Who's this you're gonna get? Er, uh, no one important. <laughs> Mr. Watts, is it? That's me, yeah, coming in. You had a break in last night, I believe. Well, I don't know what you'd call it. I mean, someone was in the house last night. It's a bit of a long story, one thing after another. See, first there was a threatening note, which I didn't keep, unfortunately. Then my car started moving around. Don't ask me how or why, because I couldn't tell you. And then there was someone in the house. Quite a catalogue by the sounds of it. Yeah, but it's not just me. You see, there's a lady friend of mine. Some strange things have been happening to her. I can give you all the details if you're interested. Yes, I am. Very interested. Well, it's like... Well, I've got to say, it's like being stalked. You see, I was hoping that uh, Mr Kavanagh came round because he knows all about it. Well, most of it, anyway. Do you mean Simon Kavanagh, Detective Constable? Yeah, that's him. He seemed very interested. Did he now? Well, I think the best thing, Mr Watts, is if you tell it all over again to me this time, starting right at the beginning. What could I do? I had to tell them. You must see that. Must I? If I didn't, I'd still be in that interview room. I'm sorry, Natalie, I had no choice. Oh, I suppose not. You realise they're bound to check it with you? I mean, they believe me, I'm sure they did. I could tell, but still, I want you to confirm it. Oh, and I bet Inspector Reynolds will really enjoy that. I bet he'll want to inspect every juicy detail. Leanne said you'd be here. Has he been bothering you? Oh, Vinnie, please, don't start throwing your weight about. I'll see you, Natalie. No doubt. See, he's upset you, I can see that. I can't understand how the police have let him go. Because he didn't kill Tony. Well, I can't be sure of that, neither can you. Yes, I can. How? Oh, just leave it, Vinnie. No, I won't leave it. I want to know, how can you be so sure that he's innocent? Because on the night that Tony was killed, he was here. In bed with me. OK. Are you satisfied now? Oh, that last half hour. It's not about time standing still. Uh, lead me to the pub, Janice. <laughs> You're on. Right then, Mrs Cropper. Will you be partaking? What's this Mrs Cropper log? Well, is that not what we call you now, seeing as you're in charge? There'll be a row if you do. Oh, she's just <laughs> winding you up, love. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, Hayley, could I have a quick word, please? Oh, what have I done now? What does he want? Well, he wants some hurt. If he's out like his dad, he'll either be a sack or a French kiss. If it's the case, play your cards right. But what happened to Linda? Come on. <laughs> it's all right for you two. Is there something wrong? No, no, not at all. I've been looking through today's output. There's a definite improvement. A lot fewer seconds. The old man will be very pleased. And as soon as he gets back, I'll be telling him. In my opinion, you deserve a bonus. Natalie's OK. Maybe I should go through to the living room. Oh, I wouldn't bother me if I were you. I just went in there to get some change for the till and she bit me head off. Vinny's with her. I think they're having a row. Come on, Vinny, we've got to get home before our party guests start arriving. You haven't really invited the aunties, have you? Yes, I really have invited the aunties. Great. Well, that's the party ruined, then? No, it's not. Look, I thought it was going to be a special occasion. I mean, it's going to be the last do we have in the house if we're selling it, eh? Um, yeah. <laughs> I've changed my mind. So if you want to sell up and split the money, then so be it. Brilliant! <laughs> Wish I knew what was going on in there. Well, why don't you go through if you're that bothered? Nah, she'd just think I was trying to interfere between her and Vinny. Why don't you go, Leanne? I mean, that'd be best. <sighs> oh, where have you been? 
trying to call you. I got called into a meeting with the heads of the department. Some of them go ballistic if your mobile goes off. I mean, I had to go in today, didn't I? First day in the job and everything. Yeah, yeah, of course you did. Anyway, you're here now. Mm, yes, come here. <laughs> oh, it's been going off all day. Hang on. Yes, hello, Martin Platt. Oh, Gail, it's you. Well, I'm still at work. Uh huh. Well, yeah, I know, I know. I just got stuck in a meeting. <sighs> All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll be there. All right? Bye. <laughs> what? What? So that's it? <laughs> You're just gonna go? Well, I have to. She's made arrangements now. Oh, come on, Becky. We've just been unfortunate today. Oh, yeah. Right, well, you've had your summons. Off you trot. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll make up for it then. Hey. Yeah, but Dessa's own brother, that's what gets me. Look, I've told you how it was and I can keep on telling you. If you don't understand, then understand is something I can't give you. You'll just have to find that yourself. Des had only been dead, what, a few weeks, a month, maybe? Yes, 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 how many more times? I don't know, you tell me how many no, more times. No. And has something been going on with this Colin before? I mean, before Des was killed? No, of course not. I've told you how it was. I was grieving. I was grieving for Des and so was Colin. We were lonely. It was just a, a comfort thing. It was like crying on each other's yeah, well, shoulders. Yeah, it's a strange way of grieving to me. Look, I don't have to justify myself to you, Vinny. It was before we met, a long time before. I don't question you about your love life before you knew me, so don't start interrogating me! Oh, you make me sick! What else haven't you told me? What do you mean? Who else is there to know about? Any of the regulars that you, you take upstairs for a bit of comfort? Blokes are looking at me when I'm pulling pints and thinking, oh, you mug! That's a lousy thing to say! Ben Des's brother. That was a lousy thing to do.